So let's get into a little bit of story time. These are stories from the inside of the American churchianity industry. So it was the year 2010, if not 2009. Let's just say circa 2010, around a decade ago. My father and I were invited to Jonathan Burness's uh, Jewish Voice Ministries Studio in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> this was the first and only time that I went to Phoenix, and I remember I was in the airplane, and I looked down the window, and I saw a giant metropolis in the middle of a literal desert. I thought I was in Saudi Arabia, but I wasn't in Saudi Arabia. I was in Arizona. So here I was. I was in the studio, and uh, my father was going to uh, go live, and I was going to be with him, and we were going to talk about prophecy, but we were also going to talk about uh, for God or for tyranny and how anti-Christian ideologies are, at the end of the day, tyrannical and despotic. Okay. So anyway, I'm in the studio, and we're waiting for our turn, and this woman starts talking to us. And she is an employee at the studio. So she sits next to us, and, uh, and she says, uh, you know, there's this guy in the studio. He says that there is oil in Israel. There's oil in Israel. So I'm just, I'm not saying anything. I'm just listening, because I have no idea what she's talking about. But she's talking about how this guy named John Brown is in the studio. And John Brown says that there is oil in the land of Israel. And uh, she's so giddy and she's so excited about this. So we're listening to her and she's going on about how this guy says that it's from the scripture. It's from the scripture. Oil is in Israel. It's in Israel. And he's... He's going to talk today. So then John Brown begins to be interviewed by Jonathan Burness, the guy who runs the whole studio, the guy who owns the whole ministries, the whole ministry for the studio. And this woman goes, oh, my God, John Brown's talking. I got to go. And she takes off. So I'm thinking, who's this, who's this Brown guy? Oil in Israel? What? So, John Brown does his thing, and he's talking with Jonathan Burness about how there's oil in Israel. And John Brown, I'm pretty sure he's from Texas. He's a Texas boy. And he has that accent. And he's talking about how, oh, well, the Lord led me to this knowledge that there is oil in Israel. So John Brown, he finishes the interview, and then he comes back to the waiting room in the studio. And my father and John Brown start talking. And John Brown says, well, there's oil in Israel, and I'm going to find it. I'm going to find the oil. So my father says to him, how do you know that there is oil in Israel? And John Brown says, well, and he was very confident. He was very just, he was very uh, uh, confident and he was very assured of himself. And, and he acted like he knew, he knew what he was talking about, right? And, and this is just a way to deceive people. You know, you sound very confident. You believe in what you, you talk as if you believe in what you say. And a lot of people are going to believe you. That's just how deception works. So John Brown tells my father about how he met with this rabbi in Jerusalem. Doesn't give the name of this rabbi, but he says, I met with a head rabbi in Jerusalem. And I I was allowed to enter his home 
which was unusual for a rabbi to allow a Gentile into his home. But he allowed me into his home. I was in his home. And we spoke about the verse, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 24. And this is what the verse says. Most blessed of sons be Asher. Let him be the favorite of his brothers and let him dip his foot in oil. It says oil, boys. That's it. <laughs> Let's go dig for some petroleum. So this verse mentions the word oil. And this guy told my father that this rabbi told him, John Brown, that the word oil in this verse can mean petroleum. It can mean petroleum. What's the Hebrew word for, for petroleum in this case? It would be zifit. And John Brown said uh, that, the, that the word oil in this verse in Deuteronomy, it could, it could mean petroleum. It can mean petroleum. I'm trying to get the Texas accent down. It can mean petroleum. That's what it, it can mean. That the, the head rabbi, hallelujah, glory to the Lord, he told me that, 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 that this word oil in the Bible can mean petroleum. So my dad, being an Arab speaker, my you know his language, his first language being Arabic, which is the uh, most preserved of the Semitic languages. I mean, a huge chunk of the world still speaks it. Hebrew was just recently revived, and when they were reviving Hebrew, they had to go to the Arabic to to help pick up the pieces on you know, forming a, a modern version of Hebrew. Assyrian uh, or, or Chaldean, I mean, a very small minority of people speak Aramaic. But Arabic, millions upon millions upon millions of people still speak Arabic. A huge chunk of the world speaks Arabic. And it's the most preserved, it's the, it's the most preserved uh, Semitic language uh, uh, out of all of the Semitic languages. And it's, it's the language that has survived more so than any other language in the Semitic world. So when you go into the Hebrew, learning or knowing Arabic really, really does help. So my father tells this guy that the word... In this verse, when it's talking about oil, is shemen. In the Arabic, this is simen. I mean, it's pretty much the same word. Just replace the sh with a s. When the Jews say sh, the Arabs say s. So the the word in oil in this for oil in this verse is shemen. And my dad then told him, if the word meant petroleum, the word would be Zif it. And John Brown said, no, no, it, 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 it can mean petroleum. My dad said, no, there is no way that this word, shemen, which is used for vegetable oil, specifically olive oil, because we're talking about the Middle East, there is no way that it could mean petroleum or, or crude oil. The word shemen always signifies vegetable oil, not the oil that you get to make gasoline. And my dad told him, there is no way that a rabbi in Jerusalem could have told you that this word, shemen, could mean petroleum. It's impossible because a leading rabbi, by the way, he never gave the name of this rabbi, because there is no rabbi. He doesn't exist. There's no way that this guy existed. And my father told them, there's no way that a leading rabbi in Jerusalem who knows Hebrew would tell you that Shemin could mean petroleum. Impossible. And my dad told them right there in his face, you're full of crap. You're not going to find oil. You're lying. 
And John Brown looked very upset. You could see it in his face. And my father essentially told him, you're, you're full of crap. Right there in front of all these people in the studio. Everybody was silent. And who's going to argue with a guy who actually knows Arabic? <laughs> the the longest lasting surviving uh, language in the whole Semitic world. And here's this guy from Texas who's going to tell us about what some rabbi told him. So we did our interview with Bernus, and then when we were done, we went back to the hotel, and my dad and I got on the laptop, and we started researching who this John Brown guy is. And we found out, well, he's this guy who runs this company called Zion Oil, claiming that God told him about oil in Israel. And it's been over a decade, and if you want to get to the nitty-gritty of it all, it's been roughly 14, 15 years since this guy started talking about finding oil in Zion. Hasn't found a drop of oil. Hasn't found a drop of oil. And why does Israel allow this guy to continue to be in their country and fool people? It's probably because, for one, Brown technically isn't doing anything illegal. He's full of crap. He's a con artist. He's a charlatan, but technically he hasn't done anything illegal. In fact, if you look at his staff, there's a lot of Israelis in his staff. And he has supposed geologists who are with him. And, and there's even a politician from Texas who's with him. I believe his last name is Garillo. And that's, that's one thing. And secondly, it's because... Brown, John Brown, has gotten tons of donations, and according to him, he has invested a hundred million dollars into the Israeli economy, doing this supposed operation of finding oil in Israel. So there's a lot of money, but there is no oil. He's not going to find oil, because there is no oil, and he knows it, and he's full of crap. He's a liar. This guy's a liar. So while we were doing our research at the hotel, we found out, because we were looking at the stock for this company, and what we found out was, looking at its stock history, there was a point where it boomed. It went up three-something dollars a share. And if you look at its stock history, you'll see that it, there's these, there are these points where it goes up, you know, six dollars a share or so. And then it, now it's literally... Penny stock, it's worth 15 or so cents a share. So we were wondering, well, how did, the, how did the stock for this fraudulent company go up? And what we found out was that Hal Lindsey at one point told his audience to go buy the stock for Zion Oil. And it turned out that Hal Lindsey had a cousin who was on the board of Zion Oil. And here is a quote from an article that was published by the Financial Times. And look at what it says. It says, Hal Lindsey, a noted TV evangelist, helped raise finance by peddling over-the-counter, not traded on an exchange, investments to his vast readership. Reportedly, he forgot to disclose that Mr. Brown had given him 50,000 shares and that his cousin, Ralph DeVore, owned 725,000 shares and was a Zion board member. <laughs> Regardless, regarding this incident, Mr. Brown told Mother Jones that, quote, it was simply in my heart to give shares to people who loved Israel. So there you have it. That was the night that I met a scam artist. And you have to ask yourself, how can someone say all this stuff about the Bible and go so far as to say, and Brown has said this, go so far as to say that God created Zion Oil? This is a faith company created by faith, created by God. I mean, we talk about Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon, and oh yeah, he had this crazy vision. We talk about Muhammad, and we say, oh, Muhammad claimed to be a messenger of God. 
This guy is on par with these false prophets. He says that his fraudulent company was created by God, and yet not a drop of oil has been discovered by Zion oil and gas. Not a drop of oil. And God created this company? And then you have this guy in this PR video that Zion Oil made in order to make themselves look legitimate when the reality is that they're full of crap. This guy, his name is Eric Stackelbeck, and he's in the video promoting Zion Oil. This guy is a journalist of some sort. He talks about ISIS. This guy wrote a book called ISIS Exposed. I think the discovery of oil in, in Israel will be a total game changer, not only from an economic standpoint for Israel, but a security standpoint, in that Israel will not have to rely on potential enemies for oil. Uh, and from an American and from a European, from a Western perspective, if Israel has that breakthrough and becomes an oil-producing power, America, Europe no longer are essentially blackmailed by the likes of Vladimir Putin. So the guy who's telling us about Zion Oil, and how great Zion Oil is, he writes a book called ISIS Exposed. Now, just imagine the irony of this all. What the hell is there to expose about ISIS? <laughs> they put all of their evils in plain view. You can see them cutting people up. You can see them lighting people on fire. Right there. There's nothing to expose. So you do this lazy title, ISIS Exposed, this lazy book, which anyone could have written, and, and you talk about ISIS Exposed when there's nothing to expose, and you're promoting a company that you should be exposing. You're promoting a company that is, I mean, I, I hate to say this, and don't take this the wrong way, but that you're, 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 you're promoting a company that's less honest than, than, than ISIS, more deceptive than ISIS. ISIS is not deceptive. You can see them in plain sight, all, you know, what, all the evils that they're doing. But Zion Oil, you got to do some research. I mean, it's quite obvious that the guy's full of crap, but you got to do a little bit more research. So you could have written a book called John Brown Exposed or Zion Oil Exposed. I mean, that would have been more impressive. I mean, there's nothing impressive about writing a book expo exposing ISIS when you're just putting stuff out there that we've all heard and seen. But you have to ask yourself the question, how could someone talk about God and the Bible and Jesus Christ and lie to people with such cold blood and callousness and in, in, in such a cold-blooded way? Because it takes truly a cold-blooded person to be a good liar. Someone who's not cold-blooded tries to lie. They're not very good at lying, but someone who was cold-blooded, they're very good at lying. Watch any interview with a serial killer. Uh, Kemper, was it Edmund Kemper? He, he sounds like just some nice guy you meet at a bar. You know, he just wants to have a conversation. You would never think if you met him in real life, you wouldn't think, at least not on the surface, that this guy is a cannibal and he cuts people up because he's cold-blooded. That's why. So, I did not know about this until a few days ago. But I started looking into Dennis Rader. Dennis Rader was a serial killer in Wichita, Kansas. He killed 10 people within the decades of the 70s, the 80s, and I believe the 90s as well. He killed 10 people, murdered a, a, pretty much a whole family, the Otero family in Kansas. Horrific. Absolutely horrific. I was watching an interview with his daughter, and I found this to be interesting. Not interesting in the sense that I think it's fascinating, but interesting in the sense that it reveals a dimension of evil that I don't think most people can fathom. This guy was a murderer, but he would go to church every single Sunday, religiously. 
and he would make his family go to church every single Sunday. While this guy was literally murdering people and cross-dressing, he was going to church. When he wasn't killing and murdering, he was going to church. When he wasn't cross-dressing, he was going to church. And he was so convincing. People really thought that he was such a religious and pious man that they elected him to be the president of the congregation, and he became almost like an assistant pastor. And his daughter said that he acted extremely pious, but yet this guy was cross-dressing and he was murdering. I can't fathom that. How can I explain it? I can't, because I can't fathom that. But there are people out there who really are that sinister. Brown and his Zion oil, that's, it's just evil what he's doing. I'm not saying he's a murderer, but what I'm saying is that he has a similar mentality, a, a paralleled mentality in the sense that he can lie and do evil and yet act pious. That's a level of evil that I can't fully comprehend. But yet, that's a level of evil that needs to be exposed. Anyway, you guys just heard some theology. God bless.